If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Show it to me. Z or T S. Show it to me. Buy our merch indeed. A child yeah. shall lead them. Maybe we should put it up as a poll. I'd be like, I want to name the kid Damien. Soraya wants to name. <laughs> 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 and we'll see who wins that poll. Oh, I feel like I've got man. a pretty good shot. Well, you know what we'll do is we'll post it in two groups. We'll post it here and we'll post it that that horrible pub group. This is this is a the first reformed. This is the first time No, I would I would never subject our child to that. This is the first well, no, time that, that somebody else win. is going to name name my my child. This is <laughs> literally would be the first time if I allowed that. <laughs> if okay. I allowed that. <laughs> yeah, I, well I did it cuz uh Sadie's in the house. So I wanted to <laughs> Wait, you're such a bad person. <laughs> oh, there's so much badness. You have oh, no idea. Man. Yeah, I kept no thinking idea. about that King review. Yeah. I kept replaying some of the stuff you were saying. I was like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. All <laughs> right. Speaking of oh, gross reviews, we shout have Shout out to Mel Cat, who is our DJ tonight, who's brought us a very disgusting sounding band and song. <laughs> Dying what? Fetus. Oh, oh, oh. Dying Fetus is the name <laughs> of the band from Womb to Waste. Yes. Brought to you by Planned Parenthood, dear listener. <laughs> brought to you Holy by Planned shit. Parenthood. From, from <laughs> Womb so to Waste. Oh, that's so uh, sad. Dying fetus, let's do it. Actually, hold on. Let me turn off. Let me prepare myself. Uh, smoke them if you got them, ladies and gentlemen. Smoke Dying fetus. Yeah, got them. Prepare yourself. From womb huh? to waste, let's do it. Or let's not, depending. It's not my fault I'm pregnant and I love drugs. Who cares? Fuck the baby. Let it die. Lyric video. Oh, <laughs> 
Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't sound like they agree with it. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not celebrating. No. Um. What we're doing? Yeah, they're not. They're, celebrating. they're not. It they're not celebrating it. I mean, and it was a really graphic, but I mean, you know, like sometimes you see like pro-life people outside of abortion clinics, and um, they're holding up big signs of, you know, dismembered babies to show what abortion is about. And I remember, like, one time telling you, like, I'm very upset that they do that. Yeah. And you were like, well, are you more upset by the sign or are you more upset about what they're doing? And I was like, it was a weird question because I was upset about what they were doing, but I was also upset about the sign. And then I thought, it's true. And then I started watching other people's reactions to it. And people got really angry about those signs, and, but didn't care about what was happening inside the clinic. And so I thought, you know, those signs are a lot. They're, ugh, God, they're heartbreaking. But at the same time, if it helps people to see the the tragedy that's going on, I, I, I don't know. And this song to me is like one of those signs. Like it's, it's said in like detail in the way that it, uh, it's hard to, but at the same time, like the way that we, we as an, as Americans are about abortion as a whole, like there is this sort of don't care attitude about it. Oh yeah. The, the, there's a giant social contract when it comes to that subject. Yeah. And it is, uh, the less I know about it, the better you can do what you yeah. want to do in this nice, you know, yeah. Clinic here. Just, I don't want to know the details. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, exactly. Um, it's like everybody wants a burger. Nobody wants to see what, it's how the burger, works. how the burger yeah. gets made. Um, There are a lot of topics here. I mean, initially, it's... What did the girl say at the beginning? Well, she was saying that she she she's pregnant, but she loves to get high. So, you know, like, what it's, was not, the, it's yeah, not her it's fault. It's not my fault I'm pregnant and I love drugs. Who cares? Fuck the baby. Let it die. Yeah. Can you pass I just, me that blanket? Huh? Can you pass me that blanket beside you? I guess... Uh, for me, a lot of this has to do with, like our society having to get over the cognitive dissonance and figure out who and what we actually are. Yeah. Um, well, what do you mean? Well, for example, a girl, if a girl says, I'm, uh, I, it's not my fault. I'm pregnant and I love drugs. Who cares? Fuck the baby. Let him die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's her body. Right. Right. Don't so you believe do in bodily care? autonomy? Yeah. So doesn't she get to do as much drugs as she wants, even if it's going to kill the baby? Because, the, isn't the entire argument that we can't tell people what to do with their bodies? Yeah. And isn't and and when does the bodily autonomy stop with the woman? Is it when you're uncomfortable with the process of a late term abort? Like I, like yeah. That that's part of it. It's like just figure out who you are. Yeah. If you if you're a bodily autonomy absolutist, then the phrase "I'm pregnant and I love drugs" fuck the baby. That, that should cause you no moral issues whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's her body. Yeah. Like... And I don't know, I mean... It's her body. If you look at what... I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I'm just saying, if you look at what happens with a DNC abortion when you're sucking the baby piece by piece from itself with no anesthesia, if, a, if somebody is on drugs and the baby ends up dying because they use too much drugs, it seems like that would be a much easier way, a less painful way for the baby to go. I'm not, I'm not saying that people should do that. I'm just saying... Like, given the two options, people should be more horrified by the baby getting sucked apart. Right? Yeah. I mean, look, I we, we I did a uh, an episode in Middle America. And I've actually, I've actually contacted. Uh, it's a secular feminist. They're called, like, the pro-life progressives or something like that. This okay. woman is a secular feminist, atheist, but radical pro-lifer. Okay. And... Somehow she got into contact with these babies, like 115 aborted babies. And they're in D.C. And D.C. Yeah, that crew, yep. D.C. doesn't have gestational limits. They're one of the six states that doesn't have gestational limits. 
So if you which can, means it doesn't matter how far along you are in your pregnancy, as long as it's still within your womb, you can abort it. So she, I guess she was the one that called the police and reported that there were five babies, and some of these babies were like 27, 28 weeks along, and. There was a thing about a week and a half ago. Thank God. I mean, I put my thing up on Twitter about it. I was like, I don't want to see any dead babies in my fucking in my feed, mm -hmm. because this woman had the babies. They had, they had the they were. I mean, we know what a twenty six week, twenty eight yeah. week old kid looks like. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't, and so people were like freaking out, and of course the media. <laughs> when the media did the report, they tried to make the woman look like a crazy person. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Um, which I understand. It's very easy. Like, what the fuck? You had 115 dead kids? Like, what the fuck are you doing? But my whole thing is the very fact that there is a reaction against the woman holding these fetuses indicates to me that our society does know. Yep. That that a fetus is a baby and it's yeah. just a it's just an interchangeable term. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. why are you freaked out about it? It's not a human being, it's just a clump of cells. I'm just gonna <laughs> send you this. Which which so are you, by the way. You're still just a clump of cells. But like aside from the argument as to whether it's moral or not, I think everybody knows intuitively and universally it's immoral <laughs> to to hack a child to death in its mother's womb. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna pretend like we don't know that there's some moral ambiguity, okay. Then why do you care that this woman has these babies then? Since we're right, pretending. Right. That's true. We're pretending that we don't yeah. know what's going on. So what's the problem? Yeah. Why is it, you know, Anna Kess' parents like, oh my God, she's so weird. Blah, blah, blah. Why is it weird? It's not a human being. It's just a pile of cells. What's the problem? Yeah, that is that is a really good point, babe. <clears throat> People are saying, oh, she should be arrested. Put her in jail for life. Why? For what? Babe, take those so you can put it on there. This is where <clears throat> we're at. So we're... We're only 13 weeks along, so we're very at the beginning of this whole process. And this is how far the baby looks already at 13 weeks. This, The babies that in this were 26 weeks, which is way further. I mean, like literally twice as far. Yeah. <laughs> like this is literally twice it? twice as developed. This is uh, 13 weeks, right? Yeah, I'm going to send I'm going to send you two so you can put, you know, there's a front angle and then there's a little side angle. But like, it's crazy. So this is like the baby can open and close their fists already at 13 weeks. The, yeah. the heart has been beating. I think for, the hands are unwebbed at this point. Too. Yeah, they are. They are. At, it's crazy because almost by the time that you find out you're pregnant, it's it's very shortly after that that the baby's heart is beating and everything's like it, it's just insane. Like how how much development happens just within the first couple of weeks before you even realize that you're pregnant. So this is the size of the baby at 13 weeks. Yeah. And the, these babies were 26 weeks. I mean. Holy moly. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and, and so, you know, I shot the Middle America commercial on it, and there were so many people that messaged me afterwards and said, I had no idea. Because they didn't know about states without gestational oh, limits. God. And then then they thought, oh, okay, well, women who are aborting that late, it's it's life-threatening issues. So then I, I literally, I, I, I showed the Guttmacher report where that's not the case. Mm -hmm. That women who are aborting in third trimester are aborting for the same reason that women are doing it in the first trimester, which is economic, social, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Really? I'm family this, relationship yeah, issues, relationship. boyfriend. It's a that lot of times that they break up with their boyfriend and they find out their boyfriend was cheating or it's a lot of times that their relationship takes a drastic change. And then they're like, they can't even bear to deal with the relationship change. Yeah. And adding on top of that, having a baby is just too much. So. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, so if a woman says I have a career and I'm not going to let this, this fetus screw with my career. So I'm going to go kill him tomorrow. That's something where we say, yay, female empowerment. But if a girl says, I enjoyed drugs and it's not my fault and I don't care, let the baby die, that's mm. bad. And that's what I'm saying is we just have to figure out yeah. who we are. Yeah, and I have such a problem What's too, the difference? Like, with that even being a thing. Like, how, how are you going to support some? It's like, you know, as a parent, there's some decisions that your kids make that they're just, they're dumb decisions, man. And so you got to tell them, like, that's a bad decision. Yeah. 
and they don't like you when you say that. They don't. They want you to agree with everything that they say, and they they don't they don't want you to disagree with them. But if you love them, you're gonna disagree with them, and you're gonna say this is a bad decision, and and this is how this is gonna affect you in your future. If you keep doing this or that thing, like this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna affect your family. The the thing with bad behavior patterns or sin as we call it that is going to hurt the people that you love the most that's how that works and so when you have a woman that's in a, in a tough financial situation or her relationship status has changed or whatever like i'm a part of this mom group um and periodically a mom will post in there and she'll say it's it's like a support group i guess more for females but they'll somebody will post in there like my relationship changed um I, I need to abort my baby and they're looking for money to be able to abort the baby and like every single time I see one of those posts I always tell them you know I we have six kids we've got another one on the way but like don't abort this baby I, I always tell them my husband and I will will adopt your baby and it can be an open abortion so I, open, open adoption. adoption I always do that I've done that for years <laughs> An open adoption, so if you change your mind six years down the road and you've like you want the baby back, like we'll work with you to get the baby back to you, you know? And um, but it's I'm giving that option and I give the option, and every single time they say no, I just want to kill the baby. And I'm like, I really want for moms to be able to have that option and that support to be able to make that decision because regardless, like we've talked to women that have that have, have done this and the older that you get, the wiser you get and the more life slows down and the more you have to face the decisions and the regrets of the past. And like, you still have to, no matter what happened, whether it was a rape or it was a bad relationship, you have to face the fact that all of those things happened to you and as horrible as those things are, and, and I'm like the first person to say like, fuck rapists, like that should be, there should be a very, very high penalty for that. But you, that still happened, that event still happened and if you connect that with then an abortion, every time you remember that, that event, you're gonna also remember what you did with your child. And um, I know multiple women who, even though it was a rape situation, ended up going through with the pregnancy. And they they tell me all the time that that was their saving grace, was that that baby was alive. So it, it almost, it it doesn't take away from the pain of the rape, but it um, it was a it was something that they wouldn't have changed. Like they would they would love to have been away from the rape, but they love their baby, and that baby was like their saving grace. I've heard it multiple times. Every single one of them. I've never met one yet that has said I regret having the baby. All of them, you know, have said the opposite. But I mean, it's one of those things where I feel like one, there's not enough support, but two. There, you know, because it's seen as a viable option and people don't realize what it does to you emotionally, psychologically, and physically, that they don't realize how detrimental it is to them as a person. And so when, that's why I always tell people, I'm like, I'm pro-woman. And part of being pro-woman is to put every woman in the best situation, the best possible state, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And the way to do that is not to encourage her to kill her baby, but to say, I'm gonna support you through this in whatever way that you need the support so that way you can heal from this event, you can heal from this without making things much worse for yourself and, uh, and, and for yourself in the future as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It it was hard to, like, people were saying, like, oh, these are over-the-top lyrics, yada, yada, yada. These are not over-the-top lyrics. No. I mean, this is real life. Yeah. This yeah. is... This is this is real life. This is what happens. Yeah, I always um, kind of like respect to them for. Yeah, I, I respect the hell out of this song for being as um, explicit as they were. Yeah, and and you know, the the idea of a child being thrown in the garbage like trash, like it was crazy because one of these clinic workers when this story came out because people were massively disturbed. They're like, wait a second, we're doing this to like whole intact kids. Wait a minute. Um. And and then the the uh, the the Planned Parenthood lady on Twitter, she's like, uh, yeah, there have been some questions about how we dispose of the products of conception. First thing she said was products of conception, and then she said, blah blah blah. This is how we deal with medical waste. And it's just like products of conception. 
you can't even say hey this woman has fully intact babies yeah nope we went from uh, uh, baby to fetus to products of conception like that's the thing it's the like you can't waste. say in then medical waste you can't say it that's what I'm saying it's like I don't have to do a lot of like convincing people that this is wrong I know that people know it's wrong just based on how they approach the issue mm -hmm. right exactly just, if you if exactly. people truly believed that this was a moral thing to do they would say just like the abortionist guy he says yeah I kill babies that's what I do is I kill babies I don't mess around with words that's what he said I kill babies okay that's a guy who's like he he he's jumped he's crossed some place in his conscience where he can look at himself and say this mm -hmm. is what we're doing but when you start using terms like products of conception medical waste i go okay you're 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 right there in the midst of your cognitive dissonance you're trying to act like you don't know what you're doing is is the literally the epitome of the opposite of what you're supposed to do as a healthcare provider mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like yeah exactly. that tells me that you you exactly. know exactly but it's interesting because he also talks about people who blow up abortion clinics. I know, yeah. And he just he just kind of mentioned it in passing, but I think it's it's the epitome of the hypocrisy in the quote pro life movement, where you have people who are saying they're fighting for life, and yet they're willing to kill all these people. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's like it's like <laughs> everybody. So the 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 receptionist to this to that everybody's getting it everybody's crazy i mean we've had a couple of these situations and they're not they're they're not they're very few and far between but you have guys that'll walk up right to a doctor and blow them away things of that nature it's like that's and to me it's like okay what were you thinking were you thinking that that would end the practice of abortion all over the world or is it you're just angry at this guy because it's so easy to just pull a trigger to depress a trigger it's really hard to get in the grind day in and day out and fight for this stuff at the legal level the municipal level with your friends you will yeah. you will lose friends if you if you speak about what's really happening with these kids you will absolutely lose friends people will turn on you whatever it's so much easier to just go you know what i'm pissed off clack clack go ahead it looks yeah. like you disagree well there. i mean I don't think necessarily that it's because you're just angry and you just want to blow somebody away. I think that like when you when you see day in day out all these babies getting killed and you see that it doesn't stop like um, the clinic near us, it was, you know, every Friday. So Fridays were the day that were abortions. So you knew every single person that walked in um, to the clinic and then would walk out hours later and, and they all they all looked um, pale and very sad and um, very troubled when they left. And even, I know that they give them medicine to help them not feel so troubled. And um, yeah, but they still, it, the medicine wasn't enough to cover their troubles. And um, when you keep seeing that and, and like you, you realize like another baby, another baby, another baby. And then you say, okay, well, it's not just in my town, but it's in multiple places in my, in my state. And then you say it's multiple states within our country. And it's, you know, all, so th the number gets so big. What was it? 3000 abortions per day. Yeah. Per day, per day, 3000 babies. Like, and I think that it, it's a sort of, I don't want to say psychosis or mania that can kind of hit you. It doesn't necessarily have to be hate. It's just that, like the idea that that babies are just being killed on a mass level like that i think that it just makes people you could lose your mind a little bit in it because it's so horrific and so i think that they just want to stop it and obviously killing one of those doctors is not going to stop it someone else is going to replace him like we need we need a whole heart change and a mind change in our in our entire country you yeah. know obviously we need repentance on a mass scale and and Honestly, we need truth tellers because there's a lot of women, I believe, that have shouted their abortion and then later 
have regretted their abortion but have been silent about those regrets and we need those women and those voices to speak up for the younger generation of women who are coming of age and are coming to the point where they're going to start aborting their children they need to hear those older voices say i regret it i see the school bus and i regret it i see graduation day and i regret it i see a wedding day and i regret it because my baby never made those milestones because i made those decisions but until we get truth tellers or husbands say I saw my wife after she had the abortion and I saw her mental state decline and I saw her emotions and I saw what she went through until people start being honest about what they've seen and what they've experienced then we're, change is going to be a lot harder to come we need honesty and when we still have this going on and people shouting their abortions and not being honest that's going to slow the thing down yeah and I, I think that that's I mean the 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 Planned Parenthood lobby knows that, and that's why they do a great job of pushing all those voices out mm-hmm. of secular feminist. Th- there is no space for a secular feminist woman to speak openly and frankly publicly about regretting her abortion. Mm-hmm. None. Right. It, it's 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 hel- you know, I had I had uh, a couple of the pro life feminists that were um it, it's fast you know what's really fascinating is that that group the group we were with all led by women yep <laughs> the group we were with was a, they were yep. very active led by women for damn near close to 20 years and they were grinding going to court all types of shit um and this group in dc is led by women cnn talked about it like all the most of the pro-life like especially the hyper active it's all women Mm -hmm. and so like there's this even cnn had to finally acknowledge it like there are a groundswell of pro-life feminists and it's it's in albany is the prototype like Mm -hmm. you had an abortion all the lies she was lied to about it etc etc and then after she 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 commits this irreversible act yeah then she's left holding the bag but then she's functioning in a society where she was not able to ever express that and and get I'm, I'm not talking about like, oh, there's a counselor or whatever. I'm talking about what your society, how your society treats you mm-hmm. and how your sisters treat you. And why is why aren't the same people who are saying shout your abortion also saying, hey, if you regret your abortion, shout that, too, because mm-hmm. we're just about supporting exactly. women. How come? Exactly. Exactly. How come they're coming to me, the, the pro-life asshole, the man? Right. Why do they got to come to me in private message? How come they can't right. say it out in public? Right. Now, that's a serious question. That all the supposed pro-woman, feminist, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. really need to answer. Mm-hmm. How come they're always talking to me about it mm-hmm. on the side? They know what I'm about. Yep. So, like, that that's a very, very frustrating aspect of this I whole discussion I think churches, discussion too. To I don't think that there's a space in churches true. for women to say I had an abortion and I'm in pain because of it's it. It's true. Like I've never seen, I'm sure that there are some some churches out there, but I've never seen churches that have uh, an abortion healing. Like, you know how they have the different groups. If you've been through a divorce, if you've been through this, like there should be one for that. But I'll say even on the pro-life side that we just don't know how to listen to people. Yes. Yes. Well, it's like if she talks about her abortion, like, just listen don't try to convert her don't even here's my thing i don't even try to convert people to Mm pro-life if a girl comes to me on the side and and, you know has that conversation like i'm not even going to tell her like okay you learn your lesson never have an abortion again that's i just give the girl a platform to say something so on the on our side too a lot of these girls would talk to us male or female if they felt that we were not going to come after them yep. or make an example out of them yep. parade them as some you know pow of the pro-life you know oh look you know right, what i'm saying exactly yeah just talking to them as a human being and listening to the pain and suffering because like if you look at the subject to this song this is a girl saying i'm on drugs and i don't care and yeah. yada 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 she's in a lot of pain so like there's the fruit of the action which is the abortion and the drugs or the, or the smoke and crack so much that you miscarry your child or severe birth defects that is the fruit but what's at the root and how do we help these girls and that's where our side 
contributes to so many abortions. And when I say our side, I'm talking specifically about pro-life right wingers who, you know, if the big, you know, it's it, it's it's almost true. Like right left wingers, they don't give a fuck about the kid if it's in the womb, but after it's born, then the kid is safe for the left wingers. Mm -hmm. Right wingers don't give a fuck about the kid after it's born, but prior to it being to born, then it, you, know, it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's like yeah. economy, education, those are the number one, whether it's first trimester or third trimester, that's the number one reason, it's economic. Okay, let's attack that. Let's find ways to get girls the help that they need yep. uh, instead of judging these girls for whatever when men are running society, especially evangelical Christians. So me personally, I hold men in right-wing evangelicalism the most responsible for abortion in America. Mm -hmm. And the people that I see, that it's fascinating because when I get into these modes or whatever, the people that are most vocal that I've had most of my wars with and moderated debates with have been men. Mm -hmm. Because men are obvious beneficiaries of this industry. Mm -hmm. Obviously. And, and, it, and if you've ever been around the culture, you know it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've with my own eyes seen girls shoved into clinics. Girls turning around ready to talk to you and their boyfriend shoves them right past the feminist Planned Parenthood folks right past the police shoves them right into the building uh and no the police didn't at me and pushed her all them feminists there fuck out of here i was telling her i said just stop we'll help you whatever you need we'll help you fuck you he said fuck you and he shoved her and then the he clinic. shoved her he shoved her in the right clinic. in front of the cop and everything cop said nothing the the uh the, little pink the so the so called feminists that were yeah. running the said nothing said nothing about the woman getting shoved from her back didn't into say there. A word. She couldn't have a word. She couldn't listen. She didn't couldn't hear. Word. She couldn't talk back. No, she yeah. had to just go in there and, and do what he wanted. Clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was sick. Deep song. It's a, it's a deep song. I, I just think you know we just have to decide who we are. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. it's cool for a girl to, 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 to kill her child because the kid is going to impede her ambitions, then it should be fine for the girl to kill a child because the, the child is going to impede her desire to get high. I don't see the difference. There, there is no material difference. Literally, w when I say there's no material difference, there's literally no yeah. material difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to Dying Fetus. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible situation, but yeah. good song. I get a silent count this one because the topic is so uh, intense, but I really, really uh, mad respect to them for yeah. for doing this. I agree. I agree. I, I, I respect the hell out of this band for uh, for doing that. Um, yeah. So shout out to them. All right. Well, there you are. Silent Cow. Rest in peace to all the babies and rest in peace to all the... Uh, all the women who've been forever changed and not been able to talk about it uh, got nothing but love for you. Yeah. And uh, peace that's, to you. That's why Jesus died such a brutal death, man. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. It's because we do this shit to each mm -hmm. other, and we do it to the most defenseless. And there and, is forgiveness. And we're we're apathetic. So there is forgiveness. So uh, I don't know what the bigger crime is, uh, our apathy or the fact that this happens. But uh, either way, we all need forgiveness. And I said, we. That's for sure. All right, there you go. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.